Feng Wang has just torn through the Philippines. Thousands have been evacuated, seas are rising, and alerts are still blaring. Now, Taiwan faces the same super typhoon, with winds over 250 kilometers per hour and flood warnings for its cities. But beneath these waves, experts fear something even more unpredictable. Could the disaster in the Philippines only be the beginning? This is where the next danger emerges. At 2 a.m. local time, the latest Joint Typhoon Warning Center track shows Feng Wang's eye racing north through the Luzon Strait, closing in on Taiwan's east coast. The Japan Meteorological Agency confirms the typhoon's core pressure remains near 915 hectopascals, with maximum sustained winds still topping 250 kilometers per hour. Taiwan's Central Weather Administration has issued red-level warnings for Hualien, Taitung, and the southern tip of the Hengchun Peninsula. Forecasters warn that wave heights may reach 6 meters in exposed coastal areas, with storm surge projected to overtop defenses in low-lying districts. More than 5,000 residents have been ordered to evacuate in Hualien County, with schools and offices closed across Yilan, Hualien, Kaohsiung, and Pingtung. Shelters are filling as buses and emergency vehicles move people inland. Rainfall forecasts predict up to 400 millimeters for the east, raising the risk of landslides in steep mountain zones. Meanwhile, northern Luzon in the Philippines remains underwater. Flooding persists in Cagayan and Isabela, with rescue teams struggling to reach isolated barangays. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration lists over 300,000 people displaced across Luzon. The storm's tail continues to lash the region with heavy rain and strong gusts. The forecast cone from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and the Japan Meteorological Agency now narrows on Taiwan's southeast. But small changes in track could mean dramatic shifts in impact. Agency bulletins stress that surge and wave forecasts are updated hourly as new data arrives. All eyes are on the eastern counties, where the next hours will decide the scale of damage. Under the surface, the real danger may be building where most people never look. When a super typhoon like Feng Wang passes over deep ocean trenches, its low pressure and pounding waves can squeeze the seabed, changing the balance inside layers of mud and rock. According to Fivio LCS, this process raises a quantity scientists call pore pressure, the water trapped between grains of sediment. As the storm dumps rain and pushes waves, that pressure can spike, especially along steep underwater slopes. The Philippine Trench, the Ryukyu Trench, and the Bashi Channel are all under close watch right now. These are places where the seabed drops off sharply and where heavy loading from above may make slopes unstable. NOAA and FIVALX both report that a sudden increase in pore pressure can weaken those slopes. If too much water builds up, the sediment may give way and trigger a submarine landslide. That is not a common event, but it can happen when conditions line up. Saturated ground, steep slopes, and the extra shove from a passing typhoon. Landslides underwater can send a pulse of water racing toward the coast, a wave that looks and feels like a small tsunami even if no earthquake was involved. Sensors placed on the ocean floor and along the coast, such as dart buoys and tide gauges, are designed to catch any abnormal pressure changes or sudden sea level shifts. The FIVO LCS Tsunami Science Lead says our seismic and tide sensors would pick up the first sign of a slope failure. That is why experts are watching the trenches so closely tonight, tracking every subtle signal from the deep. Even as the storm rages above, the real story may be unfolding far below, where water and earth meet in silence. Surge models from Taiwan's Central Weather Administration show what is coming next. A wall of water driven by wind and pressure, not just rain. Along the Hengchun Peninsula and Penghu, forecast maps show peak surge heights reaching up to 6 meters in the most exposed bays. In Hualien and Taitung, the numbers still climb, 3 to 4 meters above normal tide, enough to breach seawalls and flood low-lying neighborhoods. These figures are not guesses. They come from real-time data fed into ADC, IRC, and SWAN, the same models used by emergency planners and engineers. With Feng Wang's eye tracking close to the coast, wind fields push water directly onto shore, while the typhoon's low pressure pulls the sea upward. Shallow bays and river mouths, shaped by local bathymetry, 
can funnel and amplify the surge. That is why some districts face higher water than others, even a few kilometers apart. Overnight, tide gauge readings have confirmed the model predictions, water rising fast, matching the forecast surge in southern Taiwan. In Hengchun, officials have warned that if the surge overtops defenses, flooding could reach several city blocks inland. The risk is greatest where sea walls are lowest or unfinished, places where the line between land and sea is thin. For now, evacuation orders remain in place, and emergency teams are watching the gauges minute by minute. Source, CWA, November 11th, 2025, Taiwan Standard Time. Storm surge and tsunami, two powerful forces, but their signatures could not be more different. Surge builds slowly, shaped by the wind field and the low pressure at the heart of the typhoon. Water piles up, sometimes over hours, until it forms a broad, sustained hump along the shoreline. The sea may rise by several meters, but it moves as a single massive sheet, flooding streets and fields as it pushes inland. Emergency planners track this rise through tide gauges and model projections, giving hours of lead time in most cases. A tsunami, by contrast, begins with the Earth itself. When the seafloor moves suddenly, after a strong quake or a submarine landslide, the entire water column is displaced in seconds. The result is a sharp spike-like wave that can travel at very high speed, reaching the coast with little warning. Tsunami peaks are narrow and abrupt, often arriving before anyone can react. Sensors from NOAA and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center look for these rapid spikes, a signature that stands out from the slow, rolling surge of a typhoon. Recognizing the difference matters. A surge means rising water, often forecast hours ahead with time to act. A tsunami can strike with almost no notice, marked by sudden water withdrawal or a wall of water rushing in. Both can devastate, but their warning signs and timelines are not the same. Knowing the waveform, hump or spike, may be the difference between safety and disaster. Just past midnight, a sudden spike flashes across the tide gauge at the Bashi Channel, an abrupt jump that does not fit the slow, rolling surge tracked all night. For 10 tense minutes, analysts at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center weigh the data. Was this a glitch, a rogue wave, or the first sign of a landslide-driven pulse beneath the strait? Instruments confirm no seismic activity, and the spike fades as quickly as it appeared. At 0114 UTC, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center issued a bulletin saying, no tsunami threat detected, all clear for now. But the episode is a reminder. Sometimes the warning may last only minutes. The difference between a harmless anomaly and a real wave is measured by the vigilance of those watching the screens. If you live near the coast, keep official alerts close. If sudden alarms sound or water pulls back unexpectedly, move inland immediately. In moments like these, action cannot wait for confirmation. A magnitude 6.5 earthquake or stronger near the trenches is the threshold that would trigger an immediate tsunami bulletin from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. As of now, seismic networks from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, the Central Weather Administration, and the Japan Meteorological Agency have not detected any such event. Every dart buoy, tide gauge, and coastal sensor in the Luzon Strait and along Taiwan's east coast is reporting normally, with no outages and no coverage gaps. NOAA and the Central Weather Administration confirm full operational status, so any sudden sea level changes or seismic shifts would be picked up within minutes. If a key sensor were to go offline, Agencies would issue an alert about reduced monitoring, but that has not happened during Feng Wang's passage. For the next 24 to 72 hours, red flags include a sudden drop in coastal water levels, a new offshore earthquake alert, or a Pacific Tsunami Warning Center tsunami advisory. Green flags are stable tide readings, weakening storm forecasts, and official all clear messages from the Central Weather Administration or the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Stay ready to act on these signals. Right now, over 4 million people in Taiwan and the Philippines face the sea's next move. Storms may pass, but coastal risks remain. Each surge and tremor is rewriting the boundaries of safety. The ocean does not keep calendars. Preparedness is our only warning, because nature answers to no deadline. 